What's up YouTube, this is Kyle and I'm back with another video. I know it's been a while since I uploaded on the channel and this video is gonna be a little bit different, well, a lot different from my previous videos. Basically, this is gonna take you from white belt all the way through to blue, down to purple belt. And as far as the timeline goes, obviously everybody's timeline is gonna be a little bit different, but this video kinda uh, mirrors my own personal timeline getting from white to purple so make sure you stick around to the end of the video and don't forget to like subscribe and comment and also share the video if you know of anybody whatever their belt color is that um, this video might help make sure you share it and send it to them thanks for watching First, let's define jujitsu. Generally, it's a predominantly ground-based martial art where practitioners use leverage, angles, timing, and the knowledge of the human anatomy to control and then submit their opponent. Now let that sink in. The goal is to control, control your body, which is, would be probably the most effective way to avoid getting hurt. If you had someone coming at you, if you can control their body, they can't hurt you. Hurt sure. you. With jujitsu, you have the ability to control another person's body, however and for as long as you decide. Although we're not here to debate on who's the best of all time, here are some of the top practitioners. And then there's you. Whether you're a corporate attorney working at your desk all day looking to get active or a former Division I wrestler, we all have our first day on the mats as white belts. You finally convince yourself that you're going to just go and try it out. You know, get active. Challenge yourself and just have some fun. No more excuses. No more, I don't want to get hurt. I have to get in shape first. I'm not even going to be good at this jujitsu stuff. Now that you've managed to push all these mental obstacles we call excuses to the side, you're here. You have earned your white belt and it's your first day on the mats. This seemingly insurmountable journey to black belt has officially began. You walk into the gym for the first time after mulling over the idea for so long now. You even see a black belt in real life for the first time. Now after the typical gym tour and pleasantries from the staff, it's time to change and warm up. You're a little anxious, a little uneasy, and you think to yourself, I hope I'm not going to look stupid in here. What if I do things wrong? I bet this will be harder than I thought. Stop. Remember, you're here to have fun. You've made it through warm-ups and eventually onto the technique portion of the class. By now, you've chatted with a few other new students and even a higher belt during water breaks. In a flash, class is over. You take a second to reflect and think, I did it. You've just accomplished what so many other people in your shoes only talk about, but will never actually do. They only talk about it to their friends, you know, about how they want to try jujitsu, how they want to get active and lose weight, how they're going to start training at some time in the future. But you have actually done it. You have actually completed your first jiu-jitsu class and you feel great. Congratulations. And you think to yourself, that was one of the hardest things that I'll ever go through. But what if I told you you were wrong? What if I told you the hardest part is simply staying consistent over the long haul? Having the mental stamina probably is the most difficult part so beautifully explained by Nick Alban, a black belt in jiu-jitsu behind one of the most popular YouTube channels in this space. Why is the attrition rate for jiu-jitsu so high? Because people don't have mental endurance for it. People don't have a reason as to why they're training. I'm warning you, this is not an easy journey. You will have bumps in the road. There will be days where you feel like you're not progressing and everything that you've learned up until that point is worthless. If you're watching this video and have been training for any significant amount of time, you know exactly what I mean. You know the feeling. It's going to be a struggle, but don't allow the concept of quitting to creep into your mind. We're just getting started. Let me be clear, many of you won't make it to the first belt promotion. The road is just too hard. It takes too long. You don't have the discipline. And like Chewy said, you don't have the mental endurance for it. You just don't want it as bad as some other people. And that's okay. It's the nature of the game. If it was easy, everybody would have a black belt. But inevitably, jujitsu will weed those types of people out sooner than later. Now let's get back on track. Three months, six months, a year has gone by and you've stuck to the plan. You've been in the gym three, four, sometimes five days a week. You haven't given up on your journey. As a result, you're getting more familiar with the language. You can visualize a dozen or so positions and techniques. You know what side control looks like and recognize that the guard is something to be escaped. You're able to identify a handful of advanced positions too. On the other hand, you've also been choked out hundreds of times by now and failed hundreds more. 
but you are not a failure and don't let these things discourage you. Congratulations, you've been practicing jujitsu for an entire year. You're a veteran white belt on the mats. In most fields, you'd be considered pretty well versed, proficient, or at least better than you were on your first day. But here in jujitsu, you might only feel like you're scratching the surface of competency by your one year anniversary. Let's put that idea of competency away for now and revisit in a bit as we move forward. One year has quickly turned into two, approaching three. Now you're dominating the beginner's classes and you're holding your own against most blue belts around your size. However, you're essentially no match for other color belts. The skill gap is too great. If you haven't already, maybe the thought of competing comes across your mind after seeing teammates compete or maybe after watching an exciting flow grappling event. Then the excuses, the doubt creeps back into your head. Once again, stop and remember why you started. The objectives. One objective was to challenge yourself and what better way to challenge yourself than to compete. You make your decision to compete in your first tournament. Again, congratulations. Whether you end up on the winning side or not, you've completed that challenge. But most importantly, you have learned and gained the experience. All the while, your coach sees the growth and progression. The instructor sees the difference between the old, out of shape newbie who walked into the gym merely hoping to get through warm-ups without passing out two or three years ago. By now, you can almost smell your blue belt. It's so close you can taste it. If your school has belt ceremony days, you're definitely eager by now. I'm sure you've looked up what does it take to get a blue belt or how to get your blue belt fast and found that the answer isn't as clear as you may have initially thought. I love how it was explained by Jocko Willick in a video from early 2020 titled, How Long Does It Take to Get a Blue Belt? And in fact, it's also not, hey, how do you as a blue belt do against this other group of blue belts? It's really, how good are you against you? He's essentially saying you should strive to be the best version of you. I'm obviously not qualified to promote anyone, but I would imagine that most instructors would agree with this view on promotions. But let's get back to you. Now the day is here. Promotion day has arrived and it's time to give promotions to those who the instructor feels is worthy. And then boom, your name is called. Just like that, you've graduated to your first belt promotion in your career. Don't relish in the moment too long, but remember it. Remember the feeling of accomplishment and keep pushing forward. Now there's a target on your back. All of the two and three strike white belts will really be gunning for you now, and the upper belts won't be so nice when you guys spar. After you've taken the time to let things sink in, keep pushing. At this point, nothing is really new to you anymore. You've seen every position at least once, or at least a variation of every position. And this is why I believe most people quit after blue belt. Then that's when we start hearing things like the blue belt blues. In an article on BJJWorld.com, it says, The blues is a term that signifies the feeling of uninterested, down, or to a degree depressed about something. It usually hits us after something we've been focused on actually materializes. In our case, promotion to blue belt. But again, we must stay focused. We've already exposed the fact that this wouldn't be easy. But quitting is not in our DNA. We've made it this far, so keep it up. Keep down the path to purple. That once freshly minted blue belt is now worn. It's a little dirty and it's frayed around the edges. And its condition is a direct result of the hours that you've spent defending it on the mat against your peers. At the later stages of blue belt, you've probably submitted a higher belt or two with one of your favorite finishes. The people you used to struggle against are getting easier to handle and those roles are getting more competitive. But you're remembered of the gym's hierarchy every single day and understand that there's levels to this game. However, your progression is still evident. You're starting to become immersed in your gym and its culture. You know who's who now. You know who the loop choke guy is. The new guy who wrestled in college and that one tough role that always is a scrap. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though. At Blue Belt, we're still just starting to build the foundation of our game. We start to develop preferences. We have favorite positions when rolling. And we also have glaring weaknesses that we also must be aware of too. You know, those positions we absolutely hate being caught in. Yeah, those. Amongst it all, our level of knowledge and competency is still growing. Let's get back to the word competency now. What is it? When we Google the word, we get the definition of the ability to do something successfully or efficiently. Now this next statement may be a little controversial for some, but it's how I feel at the time of me recording this video. At the later stages of Blue Belt, your knowledge of Jiu-Jitsu is going to be higher than your ability. What I mean is, just because you know a technique, an escape, or a submission doesn't mean you have the ability to execute it successfully or efficiently when rolling. But overall, things are starting to come together for you. At this point, you feel your purple belt is just around the corner. If you continue what you've been doing for the last three, four, even five years, you should be closing in on that next promotion in no time. When you look down at your waist, you see that worn, frayed blue belt that was given to you some years back. 
but now it has three stripes on it. Suddenly, yet another promotion day is approaching. You've been at this for five years now and can easily handle any new students that walk into your gym because, again, the skill gap is too great. By now, instead of thinking so much when rolling, you're becoming more reactionary and things are really starting to slow down. While scratching and clawing your way through the blue belt ranks, you've earned your stripes, both literally and figuratively. Congratulations, after five years now, you're a purple belt. 